Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I'm the host and the visionary of the Valder Beebe show, God Talk. Some people talk to God and others believe that God talks to them. Join us in conversation with authors, religious clergy, metaphysicians, and regular people like you and I and God Talk. God Talk is a podcast available on FM Radio, Roku TV, and online. Subscribe at ValderBBShow.com. You can also subscribe at YouTube.com slash ValderBBShow. Join the conversation of God Talk. I'll see you there. Dr. Adam Christman, thank you for calling me. I really appreciate it. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Thank you for having me. This is a great topic that's near and dear to me, so I'm so glad we're going to chat about it. Well, the 4th of July is everybody's favorite holiday, and you guys who told me that you love the 4th of July, we got to think a little bit different this time. Maybe some pets are kind of skittish around the 4th of July. So Dr. Christman is going to help you and me put our pets at ease. Dr. Christman, uh, is 4th of July, is that not one of our pets' favorite holidays? Oh, I think they put that at the bottom of their bucket list. (laughs) (laughs) It is the worst time. So July 4th through the 6th is the single biggest time of year, unfortunately, where we notice a 30 to 60% increase reported from the animal control officers where our pets go missing or when our pets go missing. And that is because, just like you said, noise. So fireworks and then throw thunderstorms in the mix. What happens if it's going to be raining on top of it? Oh, my goodness. Terrible. So we want to make sure that we keep our dogs and cats indoors, most importantly. And then, of course, we're going to talk about making sure that they're microchipped. How, uh, how can... How, do, how come we don't know that fireworks do this? We know about storms. You know, you go to somebody's house and they have a dog and they say, oh, it's raining outside and so-and-so, he, he doesn't like, you know, noise. But when it comes right. to the 4th of July, it's like we just kind of brush that one off, Dr. Christmas. I know. It's like we forget about our fur babies and just think about ourselves <laughs> for this party. And meanwhile, we're like, wait, did I just leave Fido outside? And yeah, you probably did. And he's probably digging underneath the fence to run away. So, yeah, it's that guttural, visceral reaction that these dogs have when they hear those loud booms. It's it's real like a sonic boom to them. Remember, their ears are way more amplified than ours. So, um, so that's part of it with the with the thunderstorm. So it triggers this whole noise, this anxiety that triggers in. So we got to make sure that we um, we keep them indoors and they don't go missing on us. Talk a little bit about the microchipping because I think that's so important in today's society, especially if you try to find your dog at the pound, you you need that microchipping. Right, absolutely. And, you know, I'm so proud that we partnered with our friends at home again to, to, to really bring microchipping front and center this season. And it is this, this cylindrical chip the size of a piece of a rice granule, like that tiny that goes in between the shoulder blades, underneath the skin of dogs and cats. And there's a universal scanner that registers to about 3 million locations of veterinary hospitals and um, pet rescue organizations and shelters. So it's one thing to definitely get your dogs and cats chipped. And then it's another thing to make sure that they are registered. Because what happens if it's a change of ownership or you're a new adoptee and you have to change, transfer that ownership on over to you or you just move? So we understand at home again about 58 percent of pet parents only have microchip information that's current and i know we could do better so we're going to raise that bar i know we can do it <laughs> all right then i see you guys questions out there on facebook and twitter and instagram but i'll get to as many as i can doctor let me ask you what about when we're barbecuing you know this is barbecue season and i'm in texas i mean like really they're like oh, all yeah. out right so but right. what if your pet gets eats any of this you know you know barbecue drops on the ground he takes it and takes off usually right listen i'm just like i like to throw it down for these barbecues right but (laughs) not do our not our dogs (laughs) i mean listen they will get into these things because they're dogs they like to eat these especially corn on the cob oh my gosh i can't begin to tell you how many times i have done surgery to remove them because they get obstructed but then to your point the chicken the ribs all those things are so high in fat and it's barbecue food. It's a different way in which we're cooking these types of foods that could trigger such things as pancreatitis, induced diabetes, 
Um, even toxicities, you know, there's certain things that are toxic to dogs. What happens if you're having grapes as an appetizer and they're falling to the ground? They can go into kidney failure. So, you know, my best advice is if you're going to be entertaining outside in barbecues, either crate them or keep them away from all the activities because you know that our family friends are just going to be, oh, just a little bit, oh, just a little bit. <laughs> and they don't exactly. have to deal with the ramifications the next day. <laughs> exactly. Or they say, oh, he was begging, so I just gave him a little bit. Right. Okay. Um, Let me ask you yeah. about this. You know, I'm in, I said I'm in Texas, you know, and unfortunately we don't have a monopoly on the heat. It is hot in Texas. Ooh. How do we prevent heat strokes in our pets? Right. Oh, Nellie, it's getting hot in here, right? And so we <laughs> want to make sure we keep our fur babies nice and cool. And thank you for recognizing this because, listen, everybody, heat stroke is no joke. It's 100% avoidable. Think of those dog breeds like the French Bulldogs, the English Bulldogs, Shih Tzus, the ones that have pushed in faces known, faces known as brachycephalic syndrome. They are really sensitive to it. So when it's really hot out, um, early in the morning or later in the evening, take them for their walks. If you take the back of your hand and you place it on the back of uh, on, on pavement or concrete, if you can't keep it there for 15 seconds, guess what? Neither can your dog. So you shouldn't be walking them on those hot surfaces. So we want to keep them nice and cool. Cooling towels, cooling mats, having the bowls, transferring a plastic bowl to like maybe those Yeti bowls that can encapsulate water and keep it nice and cool. And of course, keeping fans on them. We want to make sure that our fur babies stay nice and cool this summer season. Okay, and one more question. Well, I got two more, one from Instagram, but this one is, when new people are coming over your house during the holidays, you know, people like to force their pet. Go, go, just go pet him. Is that mm. a good idea to, how you introduce your pet to new people? Sometimes it makes me want to clench my pearls when I hear this, because I, I tell you <laughs> that I get upset. Because we don't want them to get bit. It's not their fault. You, you're, you're going into their territory. So the best thing is, please, please, I don't care if you're a child or an adult, ask, can I pet your dog? Sometimes you say, you know, just give them a moment to chill out or whatever, and then you can go ahead and see them. Sometimes you ignore them and they'll say, they're jumping on you. It's like, can you just say hello to them? They just want to be part of the situation. The best place to pet a dog is on the chest or under the neck, not on top of their head. Because if they see you doing that, they're like, hey, what are you doing up there? And they may bite you, so so please ask the pet parent oh. and make sure. He, yeah, and here's another tip too. This always happens. I see this a lot. They're they're in the front door. <laughs> if they're going to greet him, close that door because again, we want to make sure that we don't go running. That's why we got to microchip them. So keep that door shut if they're going to be petting them. All right, and we're trying to get this question in from Instagram. They say when they were growing up, they fed their dogs table scrap, but today that's not recommended. What happened? Well, it, because a lot of research, research happened and science happened, and we didn't know back then about pancreatitis and diabetes and other issues that can be associated with nutrition. We're looking for two key words, regardless of what you're feeding the animal, balanced and complete. When we're doing these things such as table scraps, you know, I use that in air quotes here, um, it can really offset their diet. So maybe they have food allergies or maybe there are senior dogs that have kidney issues and then you give them some high protein diet like ribs, it can really offset it. So we really want to make sure that their diets are nice and complete and balanced. Dr. Christman, this has been so much fun speaking to you. I hope my audience learned something because I've learned a lot. Do you have a place online that they need to go and find out more? You know it. So I'm <laughs> on Instagram, Adam underscore Christman on Instagram, on Tick to the Talk where I don't stop. Uh, Dr. Dot Adam Christman 52 and please I, join me in this initiative of getting all of our pets microchipped and learn more at homeagain.com. Please, please, please. Thank you. Dr. Christman, thank you for stopping by the Val Bibi Show. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Hi, I'm Val Bibi. I host the Val Bibi Show broadcast on radio and television. And this is my phone pouch. My phone pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.